Welcome to a special edition of Anglican Unscripted, the late night edition. What time is it down there, David? It is quarter to two in the afternoon here in Sydney, Australia on Thursday the 17th. No, that's not right either, the 16th of November. Okay, David, welcome to the program. Have you got the time straight now? We, you, you took a 30 second break. What's the time? The time is now 30 seconds after <laughs> quarter to two in the afternoon on Thursday, the 16th of November here in Sydney, Australia. Okay. Uh, we talked at least twice now about the upcoming uh, postal poll of the people of Australia to find out whether or not the populace wants to have same sex marriage. And you told me early on, Kevin, it's probably going to go. It might be close, it might not be close, but you know, chances are this is going to happen and eventually Australia will have same-sex marriage. And I said, yeah, I probably agree with you because uh, if it happens in America, if it happens in Britain uh, and other places around the world, uh, why not have Australia follow up? So let's go to the tape. What's happened so far with uh, yesterday's uh, announcement? Well. Also, um, the the chief statistician, or actually the Australian statistician, uh, as is his name, uh, announced the results yesterday morning at 10 o'clock of the postal survey, which was a, uh, a non-binding uh, consultation of the Australian electorate. And to be fair, it's been a, a raging success, no matter what you think about it. Mm -hmm. Over 80% of the population, uh, sorry, just under 80% of the voting uh, eligible voters actually responded to the survey. Uh, and 61 point, I think it's six of them, said yes, percent, not 61.6 voters, uh, said yes to uh, changing the Marriage Act to include homosexual uh, couples. So now love wins and equality reigns uh, for all. And we just have the tricky uh, uh, work to do of getting legislation through the parliament. Now, here in America, we had the Supreme Court do it for us. We now have same-sex marriage, but there was really no way to protect religious liberties after that. Um, this is just a take it or leave it uh, from the uh, Supreme Court justices. Uh, UK is much the same. Uh, there's not yeah. a lot of religious liberty uh, for those who oppose it or want to oppose the ceremony or attending it or uh, being a product of it. Uh, is Australia going to avoid this and have religious liberty? Well, that's actually uh, the real debate that's lain behind the debate on, on, on the change in the Marriage Act. Uh, the No campaign have campaigned hard from day one on, on the wider ripple effects that this kind of legislation has had in, in, in other countries. And they've gone particularly to look at the, the UK experience and Canada, uh, who are obviously are further down the line than, than, than the UK or the US are in this. Uh, and so while, the, while they didn't win uh, the debate, uh, they certainly have, have won in, 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 in raising it as an, as, a, as an issue. Uh, and now all the discussion is about the extent of those liberties. There are two uh, pieces of legislation now in front of the Senate. I think one's already been uh, introduced today by uh, Senator Smith. Uh, and his is a pretty bland, you change the Marriage Act and you put in minimum uh, freedoms, which is basically the freedom for ministers like me not to have to uh, contract same-sex same -sex, uh, marriages. But there are some other uh, uh, proposed motions and there'll be amendments looking for much wider freedoms, not just of religion, but of conscience and, and expression. And, and so now the language has already been begun about, well, we've fought for freedom. Um, so we don't want to have any more discrimination. Uh, why are we legislating for hate? Why are we legislating for people to be able to discriminate? All that kind of language, which I'm sure is very, very familiar uh, to, to, to all, your, all, all, all your viewers. We're going through that debate right now. And, and what's uh, fascinating is to see, as we did in the, um, in the campaign itself, is to see uh, pro, a lot of the pro side, pro change in the marriage act size, just going, uh, it's scare stories, it's nonsense, it's got nothing to do with it. Um, and yet we're now seeing the, the, the fruit of that. Uh, oh, we out. do. I mean, here in America, we have individuals and companies, small businesses who've lost everything because they decided not to bake a wedding yep. cake, uh, not to yep. photograph yep. a uh, same-sex wedding. And we found that in the UK. We haven't found that in Canada. They're too afraid not to. Uh, so I can't imagine it's going to be any different in Australia. 
interestingly enough, here in America... And already has been. Go ahead. I was going to say, already has been, Kevin. So already during the debate, there's been some little instances where... Um, it's that social. It's that social pressure, right? It's 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 the media and social pressure to conform. Uh, and so, for example, I, I was on um, uh, an Australian TV show here called Late Line, which is a quite a serious uh, news show uh, debating this issue. And I said, look, my issue is not for people like me. Uh, Anglican ministers are about as rare as same-sex couples who want to get married. I mean, we are, we are, we're few and far between. Uh, my real my real concern is for uh, members of my congregation. For, for example, uh, a, a young man in his 30s who works in the public sector, who, who, um, you know, his his workplace. So this is now a safe space. Yada yada. yada. I said to him, "Do you feel safe?" He went, "Hell no." Or <laughs> little old ladies who wouldn't hurt a fly, who dedicated their lives to to service of others. I can think of one who works in our charity, uh, who just says, "I just feel afraid to say I don't think the marriage act should change." Uh, and it's that kind of freedom that we're trying to we're trying to uh, protect. Uh, and it's also that kind of freedom that we see perhaps being squashed. We do because the the war versus the church versus the secular society, um, the equilibrium when things worked well was not when same sex rights and marriages uh, were allowed by courts and judicial systems. The equilibrium yeah. when was when we just said do what you need to do in your bedroom. We're not going to look whatever. Um, but now yeah. that you know, we've established rights. The rights pertain to the the least of our population, giving them the most rights. Well, look, I mean, it's always going to be difficult. It is, dare I say it, never straightforward. Uh, pardon the pun. Oh, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and each, each camp will have their own view. Yep. Again, uh, I thank you. I'll get my coat. Uh, look, it's never going to be it's never going to be straightforward. You have to take a position on 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 freedom of speech and where you think. I'm a bit of a libertarian on that. I think everybody has the freedom to be utterly stupid yeah. and ugly and evil if they choose to be uh, in terms of what they say, um, as long as they don't actually incite violence. And then I say, let the market decide. Other, other people and people I respect, uh, I disagree. Obviously, there has to be a balance. Uh, but the fear is obviously once you remove a right. Uh, you, it's really hard to to, 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 to reinstate it, and, and so the um, the no camp here um, are, are working on on the language of, of talking about establishing freedoms and not exemptions. It's not about exemptions. Uh, so I don't I don't as a minister want an exemption from anything. I, I want a general freedom for everybody to be able to speak their mind and and frankly to be able to speak it even if they're rude and ignorant and boorish. I won't stand with them in that, but um, I think that's an important right. Well, I think we, sh we should have the right to be offensive, you know? Yes. Uh, uh, it, yes. My, the guy I follow the most, died on a cross, gave the most offensive message possible to the first century. And, you know, I, I try to follow in his footsteps, and sometimes I rub people the wrong way, and that's just the, the, the message of the gospel. Let's talk about what uh, the Anglican Church in Australia has done. Um, basically, I think Sydney said we're going to give a million dollars to stop this. What happened to that money? Yes, so, yeah, so there was a bit of controversy here. So the 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 standing committee of of the of the diocese uh, a couple of months ago agreed to give one million dollars to the No campaign to to help in their in in their work. Uh, I wrote an article at the time about that. I, but my basic line was, "Why should we surprise that we put our money uh, where our mouth is?" Mm -hmm. Other people weren't weren't as impressed, and even some some ministers were reporting people leaving the church. Uh, over this issue, that is leaving Anglican churches over this issue, that seems astounding to me. But it was a big issue and, and raised some controversy, but that's in the past now. Um, so uh, now, the, uh, when the result came out yesterday, uh, Archbishop Glenn Davies, our, our Archbishop, uh, gave a pretty standard response. What you would have expected to say: This is the law. This is going to be the law of the land. We respect the will of the people. You got to in democracy, right? But um, we're still going to keep saying we think marriage is a certain thing. Uh, and uh, he already said on TV he's prepared to go to jail for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, not if I've been in there to it. Uh, but um, but we're going to stand stand politely and respectfully. Uh, the scriptures tell us to respect the authorities and honour the emperor, uh, even if it has no clothes on. Uh, so um, we're going to try and do that. I I'm on I'm on fire today. Uh, even if we can try and do that um, and keep teaching what we think is the truth, and I think keep supporting those organisations who are who are working for for freedom of expression. Other dioceses. He's may take a different view. No. And of course, no, really. And of course, all the attention here, you can't believe it, can you? All the attention here will, will be on the, uh, on the Archdiocese of Perth, 
where if you remember Kay Goldsworthy, who was the former assistant bishop in there, and then who went to the little rural diocese of Gippsland, she's been elected Archbishop of Perth and will be installed next year. And she gave an interview to her local paper in Gippsland, uh, and she gave all the correct answers. She said, look, the doctrine of the church isn't going to change. We're going to need a national change on marriage. But then she said, quite interestingly enough, of course, the question is, who now can be welcomed? Who can be blessed? And what can be blessed, which is uh, quite obscure and cryptic, unless you're an Episcopalian or a member of the Scottish Episcopal Church or the Anglican Church of uh, Canada, or perhaps the Church of England, certain segments of it, where you know exactly what she's trying to say. Well, uh, and you should expect the um, you should expect the Diocese of Perth. Uh, and I know nothing for internally. I just the way it's going. You should expect them at uh, the next synod after she is elected to present uh, legislation for the diocese to have blessings for people who have entered into civil same-sex uh, marriages. I have no doubt that that will happen, and I think there's every good money that she will say yes to that. And then after blessings comes an official marriage ceremony, you think? Well, so interestingly enough, at the General Synod, as we as we reported and we had uh, the two main movers of the, of the motion, the General Synod itself, which meets every three or four years, came up with another very robust um, motion on marriage and also a censuring of the Scottish Episcopal Church. So our official position is absolutely not. Uh, and so what I think you're going to see is a number of dioceses with the blessing of their bishop moving ahead to some form of, what's the Church of England expression? Uh, pastoral care pastoral yeah. uh, arrangements, you know how these things work. <laughs> uh, so I would be keeping an eye on uh, the Diocese of Wangaratta. Uh, mm -hmm. That might be one uh, to keep an eye on where the, the Bishop John Parks, to his credit, has the integrity to come out very openly uh, and, 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 speak about, and speak about these things. Uh, there might be a couple of other um, dioceses as well that, that have a little uh, swing at that. Might be a bit of noise in Brisbane. Uh, who knows? But I think Perth is where the action is going to be, and we want to, in due course over the next year, watch uh, what happens there. Okay. Well, I do want to thank you for your time, uh, and we'll obviously be following this, but uh, let's hope you don't go the way of Canada or America or the UK or Scotland. Uh, boy, the list you're going to follow is amazing. Uh, of places who've done it wrong. Let's hope that Australia can do it right. I'm Kevin. Well, let's hope. Oh, oh, Kevin, go on. Yeah. Oh, let me interrupt. Uh, let me just say, uh, let's hope we can learn uh, and, and have wisdom from watching other Anglican bodies in, in Anglophone uh, areas uh, go this through. Uh, but also, it's one of those wake-up moments for the um, one of those wake-up moments for the church, isn't it? For us to say, look, and this is the thing I wrote yesterday. I said it's no good us trying to defend the right for free speech if we're actually not using it. That's right. Uh, let's let's speak up. Uh, the great thing about these these moments, these watershed moments, is, which is what they are, is you get real clarity about who genuinely is a believer who trusts the word of the Lord Jesus Christ who's just going through the motions and likes fancy hats and pretty robes uh, and we're going to see that I think more clearly over the next year or so and that actually is, is only a good thing it might look bad but the Apostle Paul says in 1st Corinthians it's good to have these divisions because we find out uh, who's who's for real who is uh, one one more pun coming who is on the straight and narrow uh, and uh, and who, who who's not yeah, your ability to uh, to pun uh, across the waters, across the hemisphere is amazing. Um, let's talk quickly. When we did a pre-show, I saw you packing boxes. What's going on? Sure. So I have been invited to uh, join the the team at the um, the St. John's Anglican Cathedral. It's a provisional cathedral in Parramatta, which is essentially the second uh, CBD uh, of Sydney. It's out, out in the west. Uh, it's an exciting uh, 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 move. I mean, I'm desperately sad to leave here. I leave in about um, 10 days' time. Oh, wow. uh, but it's an exciting move. Uh, Parramatta is booming. There's a huge, like, multi-million, enormous renovation going on deep in the, in the, in, in the middle of the Parramatta CBD. And the St. John's Anglican Cathedral uh, is on the edge of that development, and we're going to go through our own uh, development uh, uh, as well. Uh, all the workforce of Parramatta walk, walks past our front door every lunchtime. So um, I'm planning on, I've got 365 days a year to try different things uh, to reach out to uh, everybody working uh, in, in that area, Parramatta. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to getting cracking with a brilliant, a big team. Um, so I'm going from being the one man on his own, doing pretty much everything, uh, to being part of a really big team with dedicated admin staff, uh, and, and, and a boss, which is going to be great, uh, someone else to carry the can for everything. 
uh, and um, it's very, very exciting. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But we're also, obviously, I know every minister in his position will know it. We're, we're desperately sad uh, to be leaving here, yeah. here, here as well. Oh, definitely. All right, that's it for today's show. I, uh, something's going on with electricity here. If you hear that beeping going on, it off. is. It's beeping. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. So I probably have moments left. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm David Old. And you've been watching episode what about three forty-five of Anglican Unscripted. Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, the late night edition. Well, it's late here. What time is it in Australia, Peter? Peter, don't you steam it. <laughs> Hold on, we're starting over. Oh, you're not, you're not no, no, Peter. We're going to keep that for the end roll. Okay. Because that is, that's just so typical, isn't it? It is typical. Just, you must get that all the time. All right.